Hi everybody, this is Angie. I'm coming to you from Colorado. It's a beautiful summer. I'm way up in the mountains, so I get kind of out of breath. It's 10,000 feet. Um, but this week's video, I want to talk about hope and fear and the withdrawal brain. It's a lot of subjects mixed together. I don't think I can talk about one without talking about another. So uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. If you would do me a huge favor, please hit subscribe or like or even comment below. Um, it helps get this so when somebody searches for antidepressants, it might go to the top. Um, thank you so much. All right. So another thing I want you to know, I am coaching now. My schedule is pretty full, but you can book a session through my website, www.angpeacock.com. All right. So today's subject is fear and hope. And the reason I want to talk about this is because it has come up over and over again in my support circles. So I have three separate circles. One is for people that are actively tapering. One is for people in, in withdrawal zero to two years off. And then one is for a protracted two years and over off. Um, this, these two subjects have come up over and over and over in the tapering circles. Um, I think the withdrawal people, it's like they have to do these things. So maybe that's not why they, they're so present on their minds. But last night in our tapering support circle for Wednesday evening, we talked about this in detail and while everybody was talking, I was keeping notes because I was like, oh my gosh, this is such good stuff and stuff that maybe I haven't thought of or I used, but I had different language for it. Um, so I just kept a running list and then I ended up sending it to everyone in the group. But I went back and I looked at everything and I changed some of the words and um, added some things and deleted some others and combined some things. So I just wanted to share that with the greater community. These are things that people do. In our community right now, people that I know, people, what I did while I was tapering uh, or in withdrawal, all of these things are applicable to all stages of the process. So let me share some of them. It's a very long list. And I, and I also want to call attention to, we have one list about how to cope with fear. And then we have another list of how to keep the hope alive. And they overlap because believe it or not, I think the, the hope is the antidote for fear, right? So they kind of have to coexist and you use one to cope with the other. So it's kind of surprising, but I'll try to read, read them, but I think I'm going to have to stop and explain some of the things. All right. So one of them was that time is always passing, meaning you, you don't have control over it, but like right now it's now, 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 and see like five seconds just passed. So no matter what you do, you're in this process, whether you want to be or not, or however you got here, um, but time is always passing. So if you can get through the time, you know, healing is certain. So the next one is, even if I feel terrible and I cry and I'm upset all day, I just have to make it through the day. That's passing the time. People mention mindfulness-based stress reduction as helpful. There is a ACT coaching app that the VA uses for people recovering from post-traumatic stress that some people find helpful. This is a principle about what you resist persists. I want to do a whole bunch of videos on this and I really do need to like, I think I'm going to have to stop working four days a week and go down to three just so I can make some of these videos and blog posts because there's so much stuff here. But I've been listening to a lot of the chronic pain world and a lot of the anxiety world, neuroplasticity, like how do we not suffer when we have these symptoms, when they remain. And one of those principles is to just let it be there. Don't push it. Don't fight it. Don't try to, I don't want this. I don't want this. Like even just doing that can like make them worse. Now I know, cause I've been through this experience. Um, that's not always possible, but when it is just try to let it be there and let it come. All right. Radical acceptance. That's a whole nother video. We all know about that. Just means accept that this, th this is temporary. You're in the situation. It will end eventually. It does not go on forever. This is not a chronic condition. This is not a, um, a life or death situation. You know, we all heal from this. And it, even if you have like lingering stuff like I do, you learn to live around it or you still know you still have healing to go. It does not impact my life. I do what I want to do, right? Knowing that, yes, you can do this. Another person said, I walk every day when I can, even if I don't feel like it. Now, that's a whole subject about pushing, whether you should push or not. Just, this is my mantra. You do what you can, when you can, and no time sooner. So just be gentle. If you can, do it. Our thoughts are not our friends. So you know the withdrawal brain. This is a whole other video. But the withdrawal brain is not your friend. In fact, I say this often. Like, I, I don't want this to come out gaslighty. But it's like you cannot trust what's going on. 
you just can't your feelings and and your worries and all the thoughts it's just like on hyperdrive your limbic system is on fire everything I worried about never came true right 99.9% of my thoughts did not come true thank goodness all right uh, with that, there are mechanisms that help us calm down, you know, how to regulate your own nervous system or your own anxiety or your own depression or your own coping. Those are the pr- parts of our brain and nervous system that are injured right now. So that's temporary, but that's why it's so hard to like calm yourself or to like go to work or to go for a walk or to take a shower because those systems are offline or they're firing incorrectly right now. So just know that that's part of the process. It doesn't mean it's dangerous or you're going to die from it. It's just, uh, it's so hard. I know. All right, another person said, I am safe, I am healed, I am recovering. Just to always repeat that and to remind yourself that is the reality of the situation. No matter what your thoughts are saying, come back to that. I am safe, I am healing, I am recovering. I'm a huge fan of this topic. I made a whole video about it called Toxic Negativity. I'll let you go find it. Um, Shield yourself from anything that scares you. And that could be the news, that could be about climate change, that could be about politics that could be scary words in the community like the akathisia word or like the suicide word anything that like scares you or causes like a panic response while you're recovering i there's some of us that are so severe we do not have the luxury of scaring ourselves unnecessarily so if there was and you can say whatever you want but this was my life and i was trying to make it through this but anyone that scared me or posted anything scary or looked scary i blocked i have a blocking list two miles long on Facebook. I am unapologetic about it. I was fighting for my life and I had to shield myself from those scary things. So feel free to do that. That helps you trust yourself that you will get through this. I know that's hard because you just feel so injured, but there's something in you. We talked about this a lot last night. There's something in there. I don't know what it is. Some people call it God. Some people call it Holy Spirit. Some people call it my essence, my inner self, myself, people that are agnostic or atheist. If there is no God, it's just me, whatever that is, it's gotten you through your life until now. It's gotten you through this process until now. And that thing, whatever you want to identify it as, will continue to get you through the rest of this journey. Even when times are hard, it's there. <sighs> There's no wrong way or right way to taper. I mean, obviously we don't want a cold turkey, but a lot of us had doubts. Like, I don't think I'm doing it right. I don't know how to do this. I'm getting conflicting advice. At the end of the day, your doctor's going to tell you one thing, a group is going to tell you another thing, a Google's going to tell you another thing. You might feel something different in your body. And it's really hard to navigate this because sometimes you can't hear that very loudly, but really you have to take that's why we so, we so much advocate for like patient-led tapers. Let the person that is tapering say the rate and the pace, right? Because I'm the one with the symptoms. So if my doctor's telling me to come off in a month and that's too much for me to handle, it's um, in my best interest to advocate for something slower. All right. Um, this is, I'm huge on this. Retain as much normalcy as you can as long as possible. So what that means is even when you feel bad and you're able to do a little stuff, that doesn't mean like stop your life. Like just lay in bed and just wait four years until the, the magical healing unicorn lands on you. I don't, that's not my experience at all. Maybe some people heal like that. That's fine. The people that come to me are, are generally able to do something and maybe they can't do anything the first two years, but then there's a point when they're like, okay, I still have symptoms, but like, I can't wait anymore. Like, what do I do? So that's why I think it's important. Like keep going to the kid's birthday party, keep going to pick up your kid from school, keep going to a restaurant. Maybe you sit outside, you alter a little bit, but don't stop everything. Just try to be as normal. It actually, I I even thought about this in my own journey. When I look back, did I, do I ever regret doing anything? No. I don't. Did it feel terrible? Yeah. Did I pay the price sometimes? Yep. But I don't regret it. I don't think it like stalled my recovery or anything like that. I had to stay in reality as much as possible. I didn't have children. I didn't have parents or friends or anything Betty checking on me. I had to stay around people to keep my brain regulated. That's just what I had to do. So please stay as normal as you possibly can for as long as you can. With that comes live despite what's happening. Uh, We talked about this as in you're going to be in this process for a while. Some of it's shorter than others, but it's like, how do I still try to retain a normalcy and to like live or even if it's as little as you become closer to your family or you become closer to yourself or you learn how to take care of yourself. I call that suffering. Well, like you're going to suffer, 
but how do we do this with the least amount of extra suffering as possible? You know what I mean? So that could be, excuse me, that could be like, listening to audiobooks or learning guided meditation or your sleep gets more regulated anything just even if like I said even if it's just staying alive that's enough but um yeah live despite what's happening like it's it's happening it's here that's kind of radical acceptance all right another person said no one has answers for us because they are not in our bodies so that's what I learned the most in this um process is like I am the expert on my body, right? I can get advice from other people, but I will no longer take my health for granted or what someone tells me for granted. I want to see it in writing and then I'm going to read the conflicting research and the critical opinions of that first research. <laughs> like I'm this is this is my life and my body. Do you think I'm going to let them hurt me again? No. So listen in, know that you're in charge of this process. This is your journey. Follow other success stories. I love this one because Um, when I was going through this, I didn't have a whole lot of people up ahead saying, Angie, you can do it. Keep going. You can do this. There's a few. It was random. It was maybe once a year, one person would say something to me or, you know, it was not like a friend that had went through this or anything. So look at success stories. What did people do? What, how did they get better? Look for that. Instead of reading all the scary stories, look for like what, What made these people successful? Did they take supplements or did they not? Did they try to move when they felt good at a certain point or did they not? Did they lay around? Like, what did they do? Even people in our community look at their lives. Like, do you want a life like them? How did they recreate their life after this, you know, um, this journey? What did they do to get there? And, and those are where your answers are. And, and the hope really, like there is people that got better too. It's not just me going through this. I'm not worse or different. And that was my next one. Thousands of people have healed before you. Thousands. Okay. There's thousands of people going through this right now. Like I have eight support groups of them. And from week to week, some of them can change symptoms. Protracted group. We've been going for seven months. I've watched people healing during that seven months. They're not completely healed. They're getting less. Some of them are going on vacation. Some of them are going on cruises. Some of them are starting to drive or to work again just in the last seven months. So it's happening. And we're all doing that together. Uh, If you are open to spirituality, hang on to those rituals, those practices, those objects or ideas of comfort. So for me, I did a lot of like talking to the universe or God or whatever you want to call it inside of me and talking, you know, imagining angels protecting me. When I was better, I went to places that brought me comfort. Like there's this religious museum that has like all the world's religions, like all in the same place. And I would just sit there just so quiet and just lovely you know, things like that. Maybe it's yoga. Maybe it's Tai Chi. You know, sometimes those are practices. Maybe it's praying. Whatever those things are for you, this is a chance to find something that helps you hang on, that brings you hope. All right. Another one, help yourself and get outside of yourself. We're so, we're so self-focused in this process. This is one thing I did just making the videos or doing the film screenings with Medicaid Normal, or I was a benzo recovery um, admin for about two years on the Facebook group. So I, even though I'm sitting there like typing to people, you'll heal, don't worry. And I'm like, but I won't, you know, (laughs) like it did help me. It helped me get outside of myself and to try to help others. The next is believe that you will get through this. The last one is very important. And I can't tell you how much this helped me personally, but to stay in the present moment. We don't know how long this is going to take, what's tomorrow's going to happen. That is the scariest part, I think, because if I could tell you this is only going to last a month, you'll be fine and you'll be back to work. You would be able to do this, right? So in a way you have to dial that down to this is, I am just focused on today. Like, how do I get to lunch? How do I get to dinner? How do I get through the night? And how do I wake up in the morning? That's it. That's my focus just right now. You know, you can't think about how long your taper is or how it took me 10 years to get off of everything, you know? So stay in the present moment. All right. Now let's switch to hope. Oh my gosh. I'm at 14 minutes. This is a long video. All right. So I'll try to go fast. Um, I love my life. I love myself. I love my family. And I want it back. I think that's kind of what we fight for. What I, what I always do with people is what is your why? Why are you doing this? It's very helpful to identify that. Maybe journal it. Maybe write it down. Maybe make a recording. Make a video. Why am I doing this? My why was I want to know what I am underneath all these drugs. Like, I want to know what my real feelings are. I can't even tell who I am anymore. I need to know. 
Other people have things like, I want to have a child, or I don't want dementia when I'm 70, or um, I'm just curious. I want to be healthy, and this is my last step. I need to get off this antidepressant that I've been taking. Everybody has a different why. Some of us, like me, got thrown into this not necessarily knowing that we wanted to come off meds. It just kind of happened to us, you know? So it's like, it doesn't matter why. I have to, you know? Um, something, I said this earlier, something that's getting you through this, it will continue. There's something in there. There's a sh- inner strength. I have found that it's bottomless. Like, even when I say I can't do this one more second, it continues. Like, it's still there. Uh, go outside and look at creation. That's kind of why I live like this, because I this calms my nervous system. This, to me, is better than Xanax. Like, I feel amazing. I love coming out here in the morning and drinking coffee when everybody's asleep. I go for a walk, uh, me and the dog. And I like sitting out here and just listening to the sounds. There's, my friend has a hummingbird feeder over there, so we're listening to hummingbirds all day. So go look outside. Go feel what nature does for us and how soothing it is. There is always hope, no matter what. Sometimes you have to look for it, but it is always there. And even when you struggle with, I don't feel hope at all. I am completely hopeless. I would first ask you to just feel that. It's okay. I felt it too. I called it inconsolable. I would just cry like a animal, like a primal scream. Just like, I can't, why is this so bad, you know? But if you look around, maybe after you express those feelings and you kind of get your way about you look for it it is everywhere it's even in your cells they're regenerating right now I love this one the best of your life is ahead of you that yes I'm telling you I'm living it right now this is the best I've lived in 20 years more than that probably my whole life this is the best I've ever been my whole life all right I am taking back my will going through this process I'm getting my mind back That's another thing to hope for, to look forward to. You are getting your mind back. You're getting your own power back. You are becoming responsible for your health and for your life and for your treatment and for your mind. And you're figuring this out as you go. So just know that it's, you are getting yourself back through this process. Um, What else? We got a few more. Lean on the empowering parts of you. So kindness, love, your heart, the people that are close to you, maybe people you look up to, people that are healthy. I don't care if it's an Instagram model. I don't care. Just find an object of inspiration, something that gives you hope again. It, you could, I know that sounds weird. People say, I listen to your videos, Angie, and it just helps me. I don't care what it is. I don't care. Just find something that keeps you going forward. All right. Um, I like this one. It's my life and I am going to get it back. There's that fierce determinism, a little bit of anger, a little bit of grit, like, damn it, this is mine. That was definitely one of my avenues of hope. Like I am not going to let this stupid pill kill me. And then if I die, everybody's going to talk about me and say how mentally ill I was. That's not happening. That's not happening. So find your mantra. It's your life. Find that little bit of grit that you got in there. Knowing that you have so much to look forward to. I'm telling you, it is good. It's good. Life is good on this side. I feel my feelings. I see the dew on a grass blade. I can feel the raindrops. Like, it's just a different experience. I've never lived life so deeply as I do now. So know that that's what's what's ahead of you. Healing is going to happen no matter what. Know that. Your body is regenerating those cells, those receptors. It's rewiring your nervous system. You don't even have to, like, believe it. It just is. Like, that's what the body does. It's self-healing. All right. Knowing that you will get to the other side no matter what. Be mad that you are going to get yourself back. That's why you're doing this. Two more. Oh, no, there's more. Okay, get some mantras. My favorite mantra when I was going through this was only loving thoughts are true. And what that means to me is anything fearful, like I'm going to die, this is permanent, I'm never going to heal, that's not a loving thought. So I don't, obviously they scare you, okay? Like you can't not pay attention to them. They're there. But I relied heavily, like, only loving thoughts are true. Only loving thoughts are true. That's it. You know? And I would just stay in that at my darkest moments. Other people's can be, I am healing. I am healing. I am healing. I repeated that millions of times. I will heal. I will recover. Things like that. I am huge on this one. Always come back to the reality of the situation. The reality of the situation is that you will heal from this. As long as you don't hurt yourself or use another drug that is, you know, neurotoxic to the, to, to the healing process. I know there's lots of whatever people want to say about this, but heal from, you will heal from this. Thousands of us have healed, okay? 
the moments of awe, beauty, and feeling like yourself are what keeps you going and what will happen more and more as you heal. So people, some people don't get windows. I didn't really get windows. It might have felt like 10% less for 20 minutes. And I was like, oh my God. And then it's like, I take a deep breath. I get dunked back under the water. But I know that that happened. And I was like, okay, I know that I felt 10% better yesterday for 20 minutes. Maybe that's going to happen again tomorrow. So those little windows or those little moments or little clarity of thought or waking up in the morning feeling a little less, that is evidence of healing. Hang on to that. Uh, when you look at nature and you can pretty appreciate the beauty around you, it reminds you that you are waking up and you are getting yourself back. So just know that. And sometimes you won't, you'll have long periods of time. I for sure, like my first two years off, I didn't have not one glimpse. <laughs> I hung on to whatever I could hang on to. So look for that beauty, look for that healing, hang on to other people around you. You know, you, it's, it's there. It's there. We just have to look sometimes really hard. All right. There are silver linings to this, although we wish we couldn't have, we, although I wish you didn't have to get them this way. They, they are there. Life is a beautiful thing. If you think about it, I'm always surprised by everyone's will to live. Like we feel so terrible and it's like, no, I'm still going to live no matter what. I'm, I'm just, I just got to keep going, keep going, keep going. And sometimes you lose track of that, but you do keep going. There is something about the human spirit that is so resilient and that will to live is so powerful. The last one. This is a spiritual journey if you choose it to be. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be, okay? Some of us are more spiritual than others. Some of us are open to that. Some of us are not, okay? Whatever it is for you, it could just, if you're not spiritual, it could be a self-growth sort of journey. I don't, again, I don't like the way that it came to us, but here it is. It's, it helps you reevaluate everything you think you know about everything, like tap water or the clothing, pro, you know, that you're wearing or the products that you use or the people you hang around, so this can be a deeply enriching experience. That is not to say you don't have to use it that way if you don't want to. Some of us do. It's a choice or not. It's up to you. But it can be if that's what you want it to be. All right. So I'm sending all my love to you. I hope this video is helpful. Um, share it with your friends. Uh, I want to thank the group for helping me brainstorm all these ideas and just I just sat there and write them down but it's definitely not my information this is from the groups from stuff I use from things I read about you name it so I hope that they are helpful and I hope they all bring a sense of peace to your heart okay